Hello, in this snip, we are going to cover how to manage Hyper-V virtual machines with PowerShell. So let's get started. The first thing you need to know is there are a few prerequisites. The first is obviously we need to have a Hyper-V host. In this case, I'm going to be using Windows Server 2016. And next, you will need a Hyper-V switch created. And there are a few SNP suggestions um, to reference here. The first one is how to manage Hyper-V switches in PowerShell. And the other one is how to manage Hyper-V virtual hard disks. So these things, these SNPs will give you some more background information on how to do these things if you're not familiar. The first thing we need to do is cover the new VM command list. So whenever you install the Hyper-V host, the Hyper-V PowerShell module is available to you. And the command that creates VMs is simply new VM. And I'm not going to go over all of the different aspects of new VM, but you can reference the help. You can see here that there's quite a bit of uh, different parameters that you can use to do this. Uh, but to just give us a virtual machine to get started with, I'm going to just go ahead and create one. I'm going to name it SRV1. It's going to be in the C Power Lab VMs folder. And this is all going to be on my Hyper-V host. I didn't mention earlier, I am remoted in via PowerShell remoting directly to my Hyper-V host. And once I define the path, which is going to be VMs, the, that's going to be the base path, I'm then going to define the how much RAM is going to be in it. In this case, it's just going to be two gigabytes. The switch is going to be PowerLab, which I created earlier, and it is going to be a generation two VM. So I'd run that. It just immediately outputs some basic information about what it is. To get some more information about this, you could use git vm, which is another commandlet that grabs all of the different information about various vms. And you can pipe that to select object, then the property of star. And that will return lots of different information to you about that particular vm. So that is created a simple vm. Next, we can just create one with the VHD. So a VM needs a disk to run to have an operating system on it. We covered in the Hyper-V virtual disk snip in detail how to do this, but if you just need a very simple VHD without a lot of flair, you can create one with the new VHD path and the new VHD size bytes parameter on the new VM command itself. So notice here that I am specifying all of the same parameters that I did before in our simple VM example and simply added new VHD path, which is going to be the path to where we're going to add this VHD X in this case. And then it's going to be 20 gigabytes. Default is going to be dynamic. So it's not going to actually fill up that whole 20 gigabytes on the file system. So I will just go ahead and execute this. And you can see that it starts same exact thing. All right, now we can check and see if it started here. Get VM. Yep. All right, it is, we have an SRV2 VM. And I can check and see if the VHD is created by using get VM hard disk drive. In this case, I am passing the VM object that I get from VM directly to get VM hard disk drive. And that will get me some more information about this. And again, I can always pipe any of these things to the select object and the, use the property of star to find any of the additional properties that I need for these things. All right, so we've got a few VMs created here. So let's see what we can do with these once they are created. Again, we're not going to cover all of the commands. I'm just going to cover some of the common ones. If you ever want to know about a particular object or something in PowerShell, you can always use the dash noun and then the module name of whatever module we introduce. In this case here, you can see that I have lots of different commands that I can perform to VMs. We're not going to go over all of them, we're going to go over most, but um, this is a good tip to use if you, uh, and just in PowerShell in general, if you want to manage different objects. All right, first thing we have to do is we're going to grab that VM object for SRV2 and just assign it to a VM variable. We do that because I could just reuse it over and over again without having to call get VM over. First off, we're going to use set VM. Set VM is the common command that can change all kinds of different attributes about it. Again, using git help here, you can see that we have quite a bit of parameters that we can set. Just to demonstrate how this works, I'm just going to do two of them here. I can pass 
the VM object to set VM, I can change the automatic stop action of shutdown, change the processor count, and just add dynamic memory to it if it doesn't have that already. Just as simple as that, it doesn't return anything. You can use you can use set VM for a lot of different things like that. Next up is stopping and starting the VM. So let's say that let's let's check on the current status of the VM now. So the state is off. All right, so what we could do is we can bring it online by passing the VM object to start VM. All right, so it's very quick, comes back, no problem. Now we can check the state, and the state is running. Notice that I didn't have to reassign that VM variable. The VM, whenever you assign a VM variable, it keeps the state, so you don't have to constantly keep running get VM. It actually kind of does that in the background, so it's a really nice Nice feature of the PowerShell module that allows you just to use that same common variable that you used before, and it always represents the current state. All right, so let's say that it's down. So I will go ahead and just pass this VM object to stop VM, and then use force so I don't get prompted, then check, and now it says the state is off. However, whenever it comes up, you notice that it comes up really quick. Whenever you run it, start VM, it comes up extremely quick. And what you may do is constantly check on the state, running, running, running. Now, when it says it's running, it doesn't necessarily mean the heartbeat is up or it can be pinged or it can be, can be remoted to. Sometimes in a script, you need to just wait on that VM to come up completely so you can do further actions on it. So one way to do that, let me just go ahead and stop this again, is I can use the wait VM command. The wait VM command simply does that. It just waits for a VM to be responsive to a particular state. And the wait VM has a four parameter, which we tab through here. We can choose heartbeat or IP address. So this waits for the virtual machine to have a heartbeat or waits for the IP address to show up. So in that case, you could probably ping it or a remote to it or whatever. And then it also has a timeout parameter as well. So we're setting this here for 20 seconds. And that's just if it's not going to hang up waiting and waiting and waiting forever in case something happens and it never actually matches the, the heartbeat in this case. So I could just run this, which is just passing that VM object directly to start VM. In this case, I'm using pass through, which passes the VM object all the way through to the pipeline, which will pass it to the wait VM command. And then I'm just going to sit and wait for a heartbeat for 20 seconds. Okay, in this case, it didn't get the heartbeat for 20 seconds because I don't have um, an operating system or anything like that installed. It's just kind of a bare bones shell at this point. But that would actually work if you did have an operating system installed. Next one is if you just want to stop the VM and start it again, you could use stop VM and start VM commands in sequence like that. Or you could simply just run restart VM. That just brings it up, brings it down, brings it up again. And I'm using pass through again here to just pass that VM object to the pipeline to show you what the output is. All right, so next up is you don't have to necessarily shut it down. You can put it in the save state by passing the VM object to suspend VM. Once it's suspended, you can then check on the VM state. And now the state is paused. So it's paused at this point. We can bring it out of that state by doing resume checking the state again, and the state is running. So it's a quick way to suspend and resume VMs. All right, so next up, let's create some snapshots or checkpoints nowadays. First thing we do, we can, if you want to checkpoint the VM or create the snapshot, save the state at any particular point in time, we can pass that VM object directly to checkpoint VM. Once it does that, then it creates the snapshot on the Hyper-V host. All right, next, since a VM can have multiple checkpoints, we can enumerate all of those by piping the VM object to get VM checkpoint. And now you can see that it does have one here. We can actually do this again. So let's create another checkpoint just to show that we can do more than one. And then we run it again. And then now you can see that we have two. Now we have a parent and a child snapshot. You can get get crazy with snapshots. Maybe we'll do a different, uh, we'll do another snip on snapshots at a later point in time, but not, not for now. All right, so next up we can restore them. We can't actually do this initially here because I have two snapshots. We need to pick the snapshot name. All right, since I didn't provide a name, it just created one for me with the timestamp here. So let me pick this and then I will specify 
the name directly here and then I will restore that. All right, at that point we are back, in this case just a few seconds ago, but that's how you would create and restore VM checkpoints. Next up, we can export and import VMs as well. If we want to save these off somewhere, we can save the entire virtual machine, all the configuration files that make that up that virtual machine. We can export those out by using the export VM. And let's see here, the export directory already exists. All right, so it does. So let me go over here and just delete this out. All right, yes, we want to do this. All right, and we try it again. And then now you can see it's a very simple process. We just pass the VM object directly to export VM. And now we should have a folder called SRV2 inside of there that contains all the snapshots, any one or more uh, VHDs that we have attached to it, and the configuration files for the VM. All right, so let's say now that we can remove a VM with, obviously, remove VM. It's going to prompt us. We're going to say, mm, yes, I want, I want to. All right, then it says, deleting SRV2 failed. The operation cannot be reformed because it's not in its current state. Well, it can't be removed when it's started. So we can just, we could do this in multiple lines, but to show you the, how the pipeline works with VMs, here in line 73, I'm piping the VM object to stop VM. I'm saying force, don't prompt me. Then I'm saying pass through to pass that VM object over the pipeline to the remove VM command. And then I'm using force to not prompt me again. So now when I try this out, that will stop it, not prompt me, and then change that then pass that information directly to remove VM, which will remove it. All right, now we can see that the VM is gone. All right, now that the VM is gone, let's say, oh, I want it back. I changed my mind for some reason. We can look at the contents of the virtual machines folder here that was created. And then now you can see that it creates that VMCX and VMRS. So I want to import the VM. I want to import the entire one. So I do that by specifying that VMCX file. And I can do use import VM. Let's see, failed to import virtual machine. All right. So let's see why it failed. Let's check and see all of our VMs. So we have one VM here. So the VM is not created. So that's a good thing. All right. And next up, let's see here. Let's make sure I got in the right file. Virtual machines. Oh, yep, we used the wrong one. I used the uh, the different path next time because every time you have a different virtual machine, the, the GUID changes. All right, so now let's change this back, the one we just created, and now it's working. So that's good. It, it just has to be the same one that I just created. That, uh, that file actually has to exist, believe it or not. All right, once it imports, it's always going to be imported into that save state. So then we can get look at this again, same thing, and it's all great, good in the hood. Just so I'd like to wrap up some of my snips, I've created just a, a simple function here called new lab VM. I use functions like this to wrap up all this information that we just did. Um, in this case, I have a, a function that just creates VMs at a specific spot, Power Lab VMs. They're always going to be four gigabytes by default. They're going to be on the same Power Lab switch. They're going to be Gen 2. This is a very simple function. I'm just seeing if the VM is created or not. If it's not, then it goes ahead and creates it. If it is, then it's just going to say it is created. So I like to do these because they allow me to handle error messages better, and I'm able to kind of add my own flair to these things. All right, so running this, notice that didn't do anything at all, which is great. All right, so let's run it again, and I assume it created something. I assume it did because now it says it has already been created. I can run git vm, specify the name, and it was srv3, and notice that it is off. Then we can do whatever we wanted to it. All right, so that has been the snip of how to manage Hyper-V virtual machines with PowerShell. Thanks for watching.